Welcome to Raw Radio. Can I? Are you ready? Can I say we are live? Yeah, it's your job. We are live. <laughs> it just gets worse, man. It just gets worse. I was ready a minute ago, and yeah. you had to oh. wait. I had something to do. So everybody here, who's just, listening to this, getting a, 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 the dynamics that can <laughs> happen <laughs> behind the scenes without knowing. Oh, anyway. take a, here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to tie this in, take a risk <laughs> and say it in a new and exciting way. Don't be afraid to expose yourself. Take a risk. We are live. Ah, it's terrible. <laughs> it just doesn't get better. All right. We are live, and uh, I was trying to uh, tie in the topic, uh, the takeaway, which is uh, risks, taking risks, right? What does that mean? Um, you know, and, and some people will think, oh, it's, you know, doing something crazy, like jumping out of an airplane or, you know, whatever, um, climbing a mountain. But I think there's a, a lot of different risks um, that people can take on a daily basis or throughout their lifetime um, that can really define who you are as a person. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to tie this into Fuji sports for a second, because I do want to remind everybody about the Fuji giveaway, take a risk and go to our <laughs> website, take the survey. You might win. What's well, listen, that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, they're already .com. But listen, uh, on a serious note, on a serious note, the way I think about this is we all take risks daily daily you cross the street you take a risk you get in the car you take a risk you step on a mat you take a risk um you know you go to work you take a risk maybe you could take a day off you take a risk i mean it, it, it everything is a calculated decision between risk and a reward the trick i think is that often some of these risks are so low because we've done them so many times mm -hmm. Then we dismiss them. We, sure, we, yeah. we just dismiss them. We disregard them. We don't think about them twice. Crossing, when was the last time when you really thought about the risk of crossing the street? Well, yeah. For myself, it's been a while. I got two well, little kids, so I think about it all the time. But no, before but, them, it was like, yeah, you just start going. You look, you go. You don't think about right, what could happen. Right. And, and you rely on a system of lighting and so on. You know that if your light is walk, you cross the street, nobody's going to hit you. Or the odds of you getting hit are extremely low. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are just calculated decisions that we make every single day. Now, when it comes to larger things like changing a profession, Right. Now we have to think about it. Now we have to evaluate what's the reward. Is it worth taking the risk? What are the odds? You know, what's, what's my, uh, you know, success percentages and so on. Do we got to talk to other people who this might impact? Where is the collateral damage and so on, right? I mean, now we're talking about bigger picture, but I think if you look at this holistically on a larger view, we all take risks every single day, similar on the map. You take risks. Some people stand up, some people sit down. Why? Well, because some people are more comfortable, the <laughs> yeah. others are not, right? Yeah. Some people pull guard and other people pass the guard. Why? Oh, well, it's, listen, it's all calculated decision based on the risk versus reward. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think so. And I think that, you know, once you um, start evaluating your risks uh, and really understanding why you're taking them uh it can open up things for you or you can take more and more and more regardless if you succeed or fail um you know but you, you took a risk either it panned out or it didn't what can you learn from it and uh and what can you do the next time uh to to make sure that the risk you're taking uh works out in your favor yeah um I, I agree. I agree 100 percent on this. I was just thinking, you know, um, while I was saying I drifted away for a second. What is that quote? While I was talking, you drifted away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's a common theme. Uh -huh. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> hey, risk versus reward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? What's the quote from Wayne Gretzky? You score zero goals yeah. from the shots you never take. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, butchering like this that. really yeah, bad. Like you usually do, but yeah, you get the idea, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, if you're not taking the shots, you're not going to score, right? And uh, 
you know, it's a, that's a hundred percent true. Yeah. It's a hundred percent true. You might fall upwards, fail upwards from time to time. Um, but if you're not, uh, taking that risk and putting yourself out there, um, you're probably not going to achieve very much. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, living a safe reserve reserved life, it's, um, it might be very comforting, right. Um, with a very low risk, but also I think it's going to have a very low reward. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the risk takers usually are the ones who have the larger return on their investment. Right. And this is what professor Jacqueline was talking about this week, you know, and anything from early on in his jujitsu journey, it was all about taking risks, all about taking the extra step. This is the guy who went to law school and he used the law school to actually make his jujitsu career successful. But mm-hmm. the law school was not the route. This was there was a point of decision where he had to make whether law he's going to go towards the law, which was the cushy job, or he's going to take the risk, which is going to go towards the jujitsu route with virtually no pay. Right. And yeah. s- see yeah, where we're he- talking. We're talking 30 years ago in and, Brazil, uh, in Brazil. Yeah. You're not, it's not like, um, you know, he even said that the guys, the big names there weren't, weren't making any money at the time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he had the option. I've, I'm done with school, law school. What am I going to do from here? Yeah. And, uh, everybody told him, don't do it. Don't do it. You're crazy. But he knew he had the vision and he knew, uh, that calculated risk, right. Cause he didn't just jump into it without, having a vision and a plan, um, he knew that the reward was going to come. Well, no I, and I think there's a difference between calculated the risk and careless decision. Mm-hmm. These, are, these are two different things, you know, and yeah. both of them might have risk associated with them. Um, but I think the decision process is slightly different. Don't you think? How, how so? I, I do think so, but I, um, well, I think calculated risk is where you actually put some thought into what is about to happen. There, there is might, necess- might not necessarily be a plan around it, but you know what the mm-hmm. consequences might be going in either direction sure. where careless decision is something that we do based all oh, here. Calculated risk is based on facts and the data. Careless decision is based on emotions. Am I close yeah i think so i think that's pretty close yeah and i think that you have to have uh forethought and you have to see long term what this what's going to happen and make adjustments along the way because because you can make a calculated risk that has a lot of that still has a lot of possible negatives and you have to be prepared for those because as they come um so you're looking long term as well yeah i mean emotional decisions i don't know how often they pay off Um, I try not to make them. And I know that when I do, uh, get emotional about things, uh, and make snap decisions, Mm -hmm. I usually regret it. You know, I've got to figure out something afterwards to, to correct things. Um, but if I think long-term, um, things, you know, keep moving forward in a way. Listen, I, I'm going to put you on a spot here because, Uh and we've talked about this many, many times already, but I'm curious from a risk reward perspective what was your train of thought when you were changing careers uh god i hope margaret lets me do it (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah so last Uh, 10 minutes just went into the garbage everything we talked about trust me very very calculated (laughs) very calculated um well we had i had to plan um I wasn't super successful i wasn't a lawyer like uh, dragolino was um but I but, was but going you to had take a successful career in a sense of you had a job that was stable that yes. you were unwilling to leave up to that point because it was providing what you needed for your mm-hmm. family. And that is always mm-hmm. important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It was a job and it was a job that um, you've done for years had, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had been there off and on for quite a long time. Right. And um it was a decision that I, I had to decide, hey, how am I going to make this work? It's what I want to do. But if I don't plan, there could be a lot of negative consequences. So how did I go about planning it? 
uh, just I weighed everything from the financial aspects of it. Um, how is, you know, be, because there was a, a, a pay decrease, right? And there was benefit decreases, but there was so many other advantageous things to go along with it that I had to decide, you know, which is which. And I took some risks and there could have been, you know, if some, if something's just bad luck in the beginning, uh, if I would have been hit with some, some bad luck, it, it would have been like, oh, I made the wrong decision, but I was calculated about it. I set myself up where in short periods of time, I achieved minor things that made it, um, I guess, a stable is, is the word maybe I'm looking for, because I, I left something very stable for something that I ha hadn't had a lot of experience in, and, and, and it could have gone either way. And there wasn't, um, you know, like I said, there was a pay decrease and I've got a mortgage and I've got a car payment and I've got kids that I need to have enrolled in things. Um, so we got together and we were like, how can we make this work? And we made very calculated decisions on how we were going to make it work. And it has worked. Was it worth it? So, absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, I don't know if I've you said this hang out with it. me every day. <laughs> like I said, there are some negative aspects, <laughs> uh, but what, so, um, was it worth it? Yeah. You know, and I think if you ask my significant other, um, and, and I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the show before, but man, I used to send her 10 texts a day about how, cause she worked at this or she works at the same place, right. That I used to be at a uh, different position. Um, so her day didn't go the same as mine, but I would often be sending her messages about how upset I was, how angry I was. I mean, and it would start from my hour and a half commute in the morning where I'd be like, I'm, no matter how early I leave, it's at least 50 minutes. And if I leave 10 minutes after this time, it's an hour and a half. And I'm, so I'm going in angry before I even get there. I'm angry and upset while I'm there. Um, I wasn't allowed to per se to do the things that I felt were necessary to make that location successful. Angry, right? I had to follow a bunch of regulations that I didn't think were appropriate for where I was. Um, and, uh, you know, all those things combined really made it um, a negative aspect of my life that I took home with me, that I brought to the academy with me. So yes, it was absolutely worth it because I don't do any of those things now. All I do is complain about you. That's it. I, I got one complaint. Thomas did this. Thomas did that. Um, well, all that other at least stuff I do something. is out the window. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, you know, but, so yes, absolutely. It was worth it because I'm a happier person. Things are moving in the right direction for us. Yes. hundred percent. Listen, over, you know, over past couple, couple of decades, I had a couple of decades, I had the opportunity to work with different people and different teams and with different professions and so on. And, um, I had the privilege actually to work with people to build teams and uh, build groups and so on in different capacities, um, you know, even in corporate, corporate America, right? And, and one of the things that I often um, talked about or we talked about as teams was, you know, strategically evaluate the situation. And what I mean by this, we, we find ourselves in the circumstances right we surrounded by people in certain areas or certain location whatever that is work home you know wherever that is but we are surrounded in a certain environment and then that environment often is by far stronger than our will whatever's happening around us is always stronger than what we want so in mm -hmm. order for us to make a change especially if we are unhappy with a situation we really have to take a higher risk meaning we have to evaluate the situation. We have to remove ourselves from that position mentally and imagine, visualize what it would be like if this situation changed. And until we do that, nothing will happen. Nothing will change completely. We will continue coexisting in this environment that we are in at this moment, which if it's toxic or unpleasant, we don't like it, well, we are stuck. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a vicious circle, if you will. So for those of you out there who are, you know, debating or, or thinking about career change or making move, buying a house, you know, any big life changes, moving, some people yeah. move across the country. Those are huge, highly stressful positions and times. 
you know, always think about in a sense, what would happen if put your put put your emotions aside for a second and really evaluate what would the financial side look like? What would the quality of life look like? And then you can start talking about how to make it happen. It all kind of goes back to the goal settings that we often talk about in the show. Not any different with jujitsu. Yeah. If and and to, I, I, if you want to learn spider guard, well, visualize what your life would look like if you were very proficient in spider guard. <laughs> right now, it looks like and it, then it's start really ugly risk. and sloppy. Yes. Um, <laughs> How is your spider um, guard, Gary? It's ugly and sloppy, like I said. <laughs> uh, but and and something I wanted to say on, on what you were talking about there, um, you're never. I don't think you're ever a hundred percent sure either. So correct. Don't let that hold you back. You know, I've had I, I had kids older uh, in life, um, and I've a lot of the people younger people that I know are like, "How'd you know you were ready to have kids?" I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I, you're right. I wasn't. It's something that you're going to learn as you go along too. So you've got to take that risk you gotta you've got to put yourself out there you've got to expose yourself to these new uh environments surroundings um circumstances whatever uh but do it wisely you know do it with a plan mm -hmm. and it's probably you know if you if you keep working at it and it takes work right uh it's probably going to be worth it well there's one more thing we didn't even touch on what's the worst that's going to happen well you fail yeah, as long as you are totally. alive, you can make it work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, what's the yeah. worst is going to happen? The job didn't plan out. Okay. Find a new one. I didn't say it's easy, but it's an option. Yeah. Right. I mean, you have kids. What's the worst is going to happen? You can't. I mean, like they will be fine. They will be fine. I believe they will be fine. You figure it out. You'll figure you it out. I, it sounds like you're talking directly to me right now. <laughs> I would never. No, <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, thank you for doing everything that you do. Yeah, she's uh, she sh supports me in my uh, journey. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I think it's mostly because she just wants me to shut up and go away. So, uh, hey, get out of the house, go to the academy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but that, and, and that's that's I made that risk. I took that risk, you know, of, you know, just even picking up the phone. Um, and, and making an appointment to go to your first class or uh, stepping on the mat for the first time, it all leads to these other great things if you take that risk, right? Um, so definitely step outside your comfort zone uh, and, and take those risks, you know, even those little ones. Hey, man, you've been doing jujitsu for a couple of years um, and you are pretty good from top. Go to bottom, see what happens. You know, take that risk. Probably going to get smashed a little bit, but you're going to learn more. And now you've got an even better game. What did Dracolino say? He got smashed nice. all the time. That was yes. the best time of his life. Yes. He, uh, he said that, smashed. you know, he got a little older. He changed his game and he got smashed and he loved it. He loved it. So go get smashed. Let's wrap this up. Great episode right, with Dracolina, Professor Dracolina. Make sure you check it out. As always, go to our website, therollradio.com. Take the survey. While we are at it, I saw several people actually subscribing or answering the survey. So cool. Somebody is listening to something. That's right. And they're going to get the a free gee out of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. On to the next one. On to the next one. Peace. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care. Thank you.